you know, put the characters together that, you know, have a reason to be here to talk to each other. Like, don't be having King and, you know, uh, Fang Wei. They don't even care. They ain't got nothing to say to each other, right? King just going to power draw that fool and keep on moving. What's really going on? If you can, let's talk about a little bit of Tekken 8. Right? Let's uh, hold on, let me take this little video off here. We're gonna see all that. We can talk about a little bit of Tekken 8. Man. Listen, this is how I've been feeling about Tekken 8 here as of late. Right? Um, Tekken 8 has been pretty good. Um, I don't know that I have a. Uh, a whole lot of complaints about it. Um, I'll give you the good and the bad of my perspective on this damn uh, Tekken 8. Right? Really, for the most part, the goods of Tekken 8. Uh, I like the stepping, right? Um, at least the side walking. I'm not familiar with if the step is as good. You know, you would think it's a foregone, foregone conclusion that if the side walking is better that the side stepping is better but that's still to be determined um, I really like the graphical content of the game is A1 superb alright no complaints about the, the graphic fidel fidelity um, a lot of people were having issues with like the hit sparks and stuff I don't know it, it didn't bother me at all and I'm an old dude so I would think if it's going to bother anybody it's going to bother me but it ain't bother me in the least bit. Um, other things that I like, um, I like the idea that you know they are changing the characters up, the look of the characters, um, playing around with like giving them their own unique features or amping up features that they had before. And making it really more of a place, a part of their playstyle of the game, like Brian Fury, like he got that new Snake Eyes mode, but he kind of always had that, you know, at least in Tekken, Tekken four or five, I believe, maybe from four and five on, he's always kind of had something that was similar to that, uh, where he could just, you know, do a, uh, he do his taunt and then he'd get a little mock punch, and it'd be powered up, or he'd get like a little down forward the four two one four three or whatever it is they can do a long ass 10 hit combo that'd be all guaranteed um but now they took that and pushed it a step further and what they did was like oh what we're gonna do here is we just gonna make it part of your game you know what i'm saying just go ahead and uh run up in your face we're gonna cut this shit on we're gonna make it give you some new moves uh we're gonna give you some new combos uh, we're going to give you some chip damage. And you ain't even in heat. You know, I think I like how they did do that with the characters. Um, you know, King King ain't never been this grabby since, like, Tekken 5. You know, Tekken 5 King was on that grab jump. But uh, now he really feels like, oh, y'all want me to grab. Like, this is primarily what you want me to do. Uh, oh, you real like a three week type of Oh, appreciate that, Weezy. Appreciate yeah. that, sub. Uh, one of the other things that um, I did like, as far as like the grab system, was that you know people were saying that counter hit grabs were unbreakable. I don't think that that was the case. Um, I think that maybe there was smaller window, but I think it's kind of almost always been like that in Tekken. Uh, a, because you have to react after you're already in it. But maybe they've even lessened the window even more. Some people were complaining. I think that that's pretty good. I mean, why would you not? In a game where Tekken, the only fighting game I know of, where you can see the grab and react. Like, breaking grabs is a skill, okay? It's not a guess. It's a skill in Tekken. So I would think, like, yeah, because it's a skill, you know, in Tekken, you can't even really grab nobody nowadays. 
Like, as people get progressively good and better and better at playing the game, like, grabs are like wasted animations. So, I would think it would be pretty dope to make it harder to break the grabs. Um, if that's what they want to go with the the direction of it, I think that was pretty good. Obviously, if they're trying to do counters and you grab them, I like that chain where it becomes an unbreakable grab. Obviously, the armor moves getting grabbed, that's already been a thing. Uh, so I like that that's in there. Making the grabs be, become more useful uh, as an overall tool in a game where typically they aren't that useful. Take it from a person who plays King, a grab character, where the majority of what I do is grab it. Um, I think that those were pretty good changes. Um, what's some other stuff that I really like? Uh, I think those are the major things that I like, uh, just in general. The music, you know, the music is pretty decent to me. Some people don't like the music. Uh, I mean, I didn't hear anything that was irritating, right? So, you know, some people were saying that one part of that stage was bumping them dun 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 dun. Like, I mean, it's tech. You know, that's kind of normal uh, for me. Um, I hadn't really tried out the box. No, I did try out like the little uh, expansion that they gave as far as like doing the little simple inputs. I think that that was good as it's going to be. I mean, it's Tekken. It's not really going to work like Street Fighter. Um, it's not going to work like 2D games where really it's like back and forth and then moves, moves, moves. And how do you use these moves and doing directional inputs and stuff. So like a simple, a simple uh, input is good for like a, a dragon punch or a, a fireball or something. But on Tekken, it's like, are you really even doing anything with the simple inputs? I mean, I'm already just pressing down, forward, and and one button. You know, I mean, how much more simple can it be? I mean, I don't, I don't really know that the simple inputs are going to do anything. Uh, it, it probably works for some moves like doing an uppercut um, you know and if that's the case if we're trying to go to like perfect electric buttons I mean okay now that could be a problem you know that could be very problematic because I, I ain't trying to get launched for doing a hot kick but that would make it useful I guess you know that would make people want to actually use it uh, outside of that I don't really know that it I don't really know how it can be used any better than what they did right they gave it a low a power crush uh a mid or a launcher i guess they gave it a combo i mean there's not a whole lot that it could be used for in my opinion that would be something that would be universal that you could just apply to all the characters um so i mean so for it is what it is as far as like what they got going on with the um with those you know, easy input, if you want to call them that. Some people refer to it as the Harada box. I mean, I don't know. Just the suggestion box is what it sounds like. Um, and I'm trying to think of what else is really, really good that I like. Uh, I said the polish on the game is very good. The design, the feel of the hits, the audio is good to me. I like, like, everything sounds strong. Like, oh, you know you just got your behind clapped up, all right? There was no question about it. You knew exactly what was happening to you. You ain't have to ask really going on? You ain't have to ask him that, all right? The only thing he was saying to him was, No, oh, man, I was cheating ass. All right, because that's exactly what was happening. You know, I was in there cheating a hell lot of them while I was playing. Um, things that were bad, probably, that I saw. Um, the heat system, in my opinion, is not bad. Um, so let me go with the bad. The bad stuff is like them combos, outrageous. All right, damage, outrageous. Obviously, probably going to change, so not too worried about that. Um, the net code itself, I don't know how it was for everybody else. For me, it was about the same. It was a little better than Tekken 7. It was like slightly better than Tekken 7. I like, went nothing to write home about, but you know it was decent enough. Uh, it was serviceable. 
you know, I had pretty good matches. Uh, here's something I noticed. Uh, here's something that I noticed. It seemed to me like I could react to things a whole lot better in Tekken 8. Like, I don't know if they took away some input delay, if they made moves slower, if they made your ability to react faster. Like, did they take away a certain amount of frames for crouching? from stepping from block like i don't know things seem like it was very 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 easy to uh to like block stuff like when i see in streams like i wasn't getting hit with the you know i wouldn't get hit with like two one four four from jen like I, you was trying to do some slow low moves i was blocking them parrying them on reaction ducking strings on reaction like, it didn't feel as though, like, I had to guess. Like, on Tekken 7, bro, folks be doing strings, and I'd be like, man, I think I duck. I think I see that. I try to duck. I done already got hit. So, I think that that's definitely, uh, that's a, a good. If that has changed or something about that has changed in the system, that's a super bonus because now I can go back to playing Tekken how I know how to play Tekken and not how to play guessy-guessy Tekken with everything, uh, which is something I didn't really like in Tekken 7. Um, also, I want to say that uh, the bad, probably the chip damage on some of the moves was kind of crazy. Um, they'll probably tone it down. I don't really know, you know, because we don't have the full game and we can't practice and we don't really know the scenario maybe that stuff is not so bad really right because i know the way people were playing the game uh, not a lot of people were really taking advantage of the system obviously we only had it for you know some people three days and some people six days at most uh so it really definitely had a it's a, a gap that needs to be filled as far as knowledge so it can't really say which one is it going to be? Uh, if it's good or bad, uh, that's just to be determined. Uh, as far as stuff that I kind of was indifferent about, um, I kind of was indifferent about the heat system itself, right? Uh, yes, it added to the game a little bit, but in my opinion and in my experience, it didn't really make me feel like I had to cut it on. Like, obviously, when you do certain moves, you go into it and you get those benefits. But, and this could just be because of lack of understanding of how the mechanics work to the fullest degree thus far. Um, it was really, really uh, not intuitive as far as like what I'm supposed to be using this for, right? And I'm sure that there are different strategies that will evolve. Uh, there will be times where we'll be doing like, oh, some people was cutting their junk on and trying to rush you down with all these new cheating tactics. Um, you know, sometimes people would save it, right? I don't know if people were doing this. I was doing it sometimes where I would be fighting and then I would save it and when I would block, and I'd get my health low, I'd be like, oh, let me go into let me go into the heat mode and start getting some of this health back when I make you block my moves. Right? You know, so then you've used your health, you used your heat all the way up. I still got my heat. Um, that stuff was pretty pretty decent. We'll see how that pans out. Uh, another thing that really was interesting was being able to uh, like go into rage and then gain beyond rage health that was kind of interesting um that was very very interesting so you could like it's anytime you went into rage if you had white life beyond it you could get your health back beyond the, the rage uh, bar and then you could still do a rage art and now i don't know if that did something to the percentage of damage that your rage art would do i didn't really get to check that out uh so that'd be interesting to see how they do do with that um the heat dashes um you know 
they weren't as bad as I thought they were going to be. Um, when you do the heat dash, you have to, if you're in heat to do the heat dash, you got to hold forward or tap forward or something like that, or tap forward, forward. Um, that was, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Like, um, you know, like I said, to be determined whether or not it's going to be a game changer in the future. But I was really under the mindset of like, you can't do nothing but like block low or stand up. And it didn't seem like it was that overbearing. Um, I don't know how I feel about the heat burst. Like, I don't know what it wanted to do. It's like it wanted to be an armor move, but it wasn't an armor move. Uh, like it stopped time. I, I really didn't understand it too much. You know, people were using it just to use it. Um, you know, you had to cancel. You know, it was, like I said, I was just indifferent to it. Like most of the heat system, maybe just because we're not, I don't have it and I don't get to practice it. You know, we didn't really get to practice practice. Um, I think that that really made it where it was just kind of like, uh, you know, I'll just see what this is when I do it. Uh, you know, some of the setups that came out of the heat dashes were pretty gross. Uh, certain characters like Brian, he had some pretty good stuff. Uh, anybody with a low heat smash, if they hit you and, you know, with a heat engager, like it was about to get problematic. Um, if you ran up like King, King kind of was pretty strong because he got his running throw mix up um, right out of right out of run automatic so you know normally you're not able to do stuff like that like a running giant swing without stopping uh, but being able to do that and do the shining wizard uh, and threaten the running three so you can get more frames a knockdown uh, chip damage uh, it was pretty interesting to see how they put that together and it's like it's it's strong but it didn't seem super overpowered it's like oh you can blow your load and do it this one time uh you can do it again if you want to but then you're gonna lose a whole bunch of stuff like uh you know it was funny because the way combo damage worked was a little strange uh people like king would do maybe a he would use all his resource and do like 73 damage you know um just depend on the combo starter obviously uh there's a lot of a lot of things that they changed like uh things like taunt jet upper reduce the damage king's push into four two one they reduce the damage um they actually count like the push and the taunt as a an attack and it. I guess, it, but it takes no damage, but it takes full damage and then everything afterwards is like 70% or something like that. Like, I don't know, that was a strange choice. But I mean, I guess they just, they didn't really, uh, they don't, it seems to me like they want to go two different ways. It seems to me like they want to make this game combo heavy and not combo heavy at the same time. Um, I really noticed that um, this seemed more about fighting, like strings weren't always leading to knockdown combos and uh, juggle starters on counter hit. Like it really was more like I, the other things I did really like was like the magic fours and certain counter hits. Instead of leading into a long combo, it might stun you and then they get like a 12 or 13, 14 frame move. Uh, that's guaranteed and it's like you know you got bow bat out and then you back to fight uh, it wasn't a whole bunch of like I'm gonna hit you then I'm about to do a long ass combo because you ran into this magic pool right uh, did you pressed out of some shit or I pressed out of some shit and you didn't expect it and now you lost all your life like it's it definitely is putting more focus on the movement aspect of the game and a lot of aspect, uh, a lot of focus on like power crushing your way through offense, uh, hard guessing, 
you know, not so I, – I didn't find myself being able to, like, cheat the defense. Uh, you kind of had to, like, really decide what you were going to do. But your options, if you chose the right options, were normally very good. Uh, that was pretty, pretty decent. Um, for the most part, I'm pretty excited for Tank and 8. Uh, it, it did, to me, feel still like a Tekken 7, you know, super revamp. But I believe that's just because I only got to dig to a very, very surface level, right? You know, I got to pluck up a little grass and see some dirt. You know, I didn't really get all the way down there to the red Georgia clay. All right, we didn't get to the limestone of Tekken 8. So, you know, there's a lot that has to be discovered that's probably going to make this game be way different. You know, I can tell the difference when I played Tekken 7 after playing Tekken 8. Like, they did get you to be an aggressive player. Like, it, it definitely pushed even a player like myself to be more aggressive. And everybody knows me. They know that uh, I'm a very defensive player, you know. Um, but I even have a match. Uh, if you check me out on YouTube, one of the videos is called "We Ain't Blocking No More." All right, that's just how compelling it is to make you want to swing in this game. Uh, they give you all of the mechanics to really like not feel like you want to block stuff. Like, not that you don't want to have any defense, but it very much makes you want to beat up the opponent instead of, like, try to outmaneuver and punish the opponent. It's kind of like we got Mike Tyson in the ring versus Mike Tyson in the ring. All right? Mike Tyson, he got, he got defense, but we know what we came here for, to see them haymakers, all right? And that's kind of what Tekken 8 feels like. It's like, oh, we're going to make y'all realize, like, oh, you're going to get these hands. Uh... Is that going to end up being how it really ends up being? I don't know, but that was my synopsis on it uh, up until this point. Uh, I think it's a pretty good game. I think it's going to be pretty good. I'm excited for it. Uh, I'm sure they're going to make the proper changes, do some of them damage tones. Uh, now, here's the last thing I'm going to say is my wish list. Right? What is my wish list for Tekken 8? I know they're not going to do this. And probably everybody would not agree with them doing this but you know in every other game right every other fighting game i'm almost gonna say 100 percent of every other fighting game when you punish somebody with a grab they can't break that shit i would love i would love i know y'all are gonna say hold on mike some people get cheating ass jump for grab for me for they throw Listen, even if you had to slow down some grabs, I would think it would be a great addition to add this to Tekken. To be able to punish with a throw, right? Just in its unbreakable on, on, you know, frames where you can't move, right? I think that that would be a great addition to Tekken. Uh, it would make the grabs actually useful, right? It would make them be something that are worth all that animation that the animation team put into them. Uh, it would change up the variety of punishes, um, change up situations. You know, a lot of the time, you know, what if you got a grab that can side change, right? My back's to the wall, you do so something unsafe. I remember experiencing this in Tekken 7 a lot, right? People would do like a power crush with Bob. They do this belly bump. It's minus 12, or my best punisher might be a 12 frame move, right? And then I do, back one two hit him and then he do the power crush again it's like oh man i tried to do some other offense and this will bust me up on the wall how great would it be if he did the belly bump and then i did a throw that either threw him far away from the wall or put his back to the wall and he had to break it now he's going to think twice about doing armor move that is you know minus 12 minus 14 minus 16 or some junk i could just throw you to the wall right i think that that would actually uh i think that would bring a new depth to to the game uh for me personally i know a lot of people probably just saying mike you only want that because you play king 
I ain't gonna lie, he would definitely benefit from it. And he would definitely be cheap as a mug because he's gonna be giant swinging you at 10 frames. Uh, but all, all they would really have to do if they really want to change that uh, would be change up some frames for some stuff. Uh, that would actually be a pretty good, I think that would be a pretty good thing to add in the game. Uh, something I did like, I like the parry system. Now that you don't die for low parry, and um, I mean for getting low parry, and the fact that it slows down and it's like a little catch animation, so you're less likely to like let it drop, even though it's still possible, because y'all know y'all don't be trying to do it, but you get it anyway. So uh, they, I like what they did with that. Uh, another wish I might want to have for Tekken 8, um, maybe some quality of life stuff like. Um, Here's the idea I had, right? Y'all can go tell, um, y'all could tell Harada this right here, right? I was thinking like, why don't they have like mini games that help you learn the game, right? Help you learn some of these core mechanics that, you know, everybody complains is hard to do and what makes Tekken hard, right? Like, why won't you just have like a racing mode? It could be something silly. You have a racing mode and you have like, Kazuya, you can pick any Mishima, and you have them like race, but the only input you could do is wave dashes, so that people can get used to wave dashing, and it would just be like a little mode where they just wave dash versus each other, like a split screen, little online game. Um, that would be, I think that would be pretty dope, right? I think that would be very dope. You know, being able to have like wave dash wave dash competitions and the next thing you know you know all you're doing is doing the motion and you can have a little cheesy ass background in it but you can make it silly but you can also teach the people um you know you can also teach the people how to do some of these things korean back dash you want folks to learn how to do it um i mean maybe they don't because they did kind of lower the back dashes i don't know how i feel about that just yet it's not it didn't seem like it was super big deal when I was playing you know it, it didn't seem like a major big deal and I was playing with King the one who can't back dash at all um, but I think it did help to feed what I was saying earlier about the, the drive to press forward with offense right it did it made me be like hey listen I just oh you just gonna try to be on me you gonna try to keep putting these moves on me oh I'm just gonna up for both kicks you and kick you in the mouth and then I'm gonna run in your face with a mix up uh, that definitely uh, fed into what I think was more aggressive and you know like I said it, it forced me to use the movement uh, the three dimensional movement but uh, as far as some other stuff I think that might be cool in Tekken um, maybe definitely want to see team battle um, if y'all have never checked out the, T, the uh, THT you can check that out over on the YouTube channel being able to have something like team battle back in and then have it be an online thing like you just don't know how different and how easy you could make like you could make like big events happen it I my mind is expanded really when it comes to like where Tekken could be just in all facets like it would be so amazing you could have teams playing teams you could have cut like, uh, we ain't gonna give away all my ideas but I'm just saying like I think that that would be pretty dope um, have some like um, I don't know if you've ever heard of a game called like Urban Rain but maybe like a co-op Tekken Force would be kind of dope uh, I'm always down for anything co-op uh, I always like the Tekken Force games uh, now I'm going to say something that's not going to be popular I like the story mode in Tekken 7 the story was bad, but I like what they were doing, right? Which is like, you know, kind of where all the fighting games are going nowadays. Like, we're going to have a story mode that is story-driven. It would be better if they let you play with a few more of the characters. Um, you know, we could, this is asking for a lot, but, you know, it would be better to even have, like, a smaller story mode but each character's story in it, or if you just have one big story mode and just add all of the characters' perspectives in it, right? Like, I'll give you a great example. We know it's between 
Kazuya and Jin. That's what's really going on, right? What I say? What's really going on? Okay, that would be something that would be very much the central focus point, right? But then, why not have in there, like on a side note, a hey, up next we got King fighting against uh, fucking King versus Ling, right? Kind of like what they did with Bloodline Rebellion. Uh, I think that's what it's called. Uh, the, the Netflix show. Like, being able to like, have a little side story. And like, yeah, this is how this ties all into the main story. We're never going to forget that Kazuya is here to fight Jin. And Jin is here to fight Kazuya. But, let me also explain to you why you know, Lydia is here. Uh, let me explain to you why this girl's selling coffee here, right? Like, I think that those things would be, they would make the story mode very dope. Everybody would get a little bit of representation, right? And it don't have to be super deep. Like if you want it to be super deep, you still got arcade mode and it just tells you the ending, you know, give you a little ending for each character like Tekken traditionally does. Uh, but just being able to have all those characters be a part of the story mode uh, in some facet, right? Even if it's just like, Everybody don't get their own thing. You just get a one-off between this person and this person. And like, hey, look, this is why I'm here. This is why I'm here. I'm going to take you out. I'm, I got to do this. I'm going to try to win. Hey, I got to save these kids. My, my baby mama at the house, she's been begging me for milk and water. Uh, I, ain't been, I ain't got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you want it to do, you can just focus on them a little bit. You know, put the characters together that, you know, have a reason to be here to talk to each other. Like, don't be having King and, you know, uh, Fang Wei. They don't even they ain't got nothing to say to each other, right? King just going to pile drive that fool and keep on moving. Uh, but those are just some of the ideas I was thinking about. Uh, and maybe in some future, uh, in the future, I might have a whole stream or a whole video on just what I want to see out of Tekken 8. Uh, but as far as my opinion about Tekken 8, that's pretty much it. You know, that's the bulk of it, you know. Hey, what's going on with you? It's your boy, M.I. Sizzle, all right? Look, I know you just got finished watching the video. You probably liked it, probably got something to say about it, and probably want a little bit more. So how about you go ahead and do this for your boy? How about you do this? You like, you comment, and you subscribe. And then check us out over here at Twitter, at TKN underscore house. And most importantly, if you don't do nothing else, you got to check out the website, all right? TKNHouseENT.com. There you can get much more content, content you won't find on YouTube. Also, you can check out some of the player profiles from around the way. And you can get you some fresh threads, just like so. So, I mean, really, there's no way you can lose. If anything, you already doing yourself a disservice.